We got a new camera to test, the Sony A6700. Finally, Sony, a decent A6000 series upgrade with all of the sauce in it. So, think FX30 sensor, A6000 series body, all of the AI stuff, the artificial intelligence, the tracking from the A7R5, plus some of the new stuff from the Sony ZV-E1, all in the package under 1500 bucks. Ooh, hoo, hoo, we gotta talk about this one, let's go. Oh yeah, I need to give y'all a tour of the new A6700. Do you know that this thing is actually slightly bigger than the 6600, but it's actually 10 grams lighter, so it's been working out. Let's have a look around, shall we? On the front, let's take this lens off. There's a 26 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. On the top, we actually have a record button now, and we actually have a new set up right here. So there's a photo, video, and SQ switch similar to the A7 IV, A7R5, but it's actually easier to use because the dial is underneath the primary mode dial. We got a wheel right here that you can customize anything. You got your C1 right here. You got your C2 right here. You got your C3 still right here. On the top, we have the multi-interface digital shoe with the menu button right here. If we flip this bad boy open, we now have a 1.03 million dot display, but this is a touch interface like you get with the new ZV-E1. Let me show you, there's actually a shutter button right here on the screen if you wanna take a photo. Bam! It actually has new features in here like touch shutter plus auto exposure, and you can swipe up to get to your FM menu. And if you want to, just like the ZV-E1, if we press on ISO, bam, I can change my ISO right from the screen or my shutter speed or my aperture, all that good stuff. And the EVF is 2.36 million dots, but it is 120 Hertz. Z battery, just like the A6600. And on the left side, we have a microphone jack, a USB-C 3.2 high speed port that does support power delivery, a single car slot, a headphone jack, and a HDMI micro mini one of those ports oh whatever does it pass the pinky test uh no nah, the pinky still hangs but that's all right let's go look what i got man can you hold this without dropping your bike hey man what's this that is the new a6700 i'm showing him this because he got a, a fx30 so this is basically like a hybrid version of the FX30. We about to take this camera and go try to get some pictures of his dope ass bike. Let me show y'all his bike real quick. Let me show y'all his bike. Alright, we parked next to the freeway by the airport. This is a tad bit sketchy, but we gonna roll with it. We gotta get some dope pictures of him on his bike. What kind of bike is this, by the way? Uh, 1300 uh, Suzuki Hayabusa. A 1300 Suzuki Hayabusa. All I know is I want one, but the plane is coming, so we gonna try to get a picture of him on the bike while the plane takes off. Hopefully it works. The only thing with this camera, even though Sony says it's a new shutter mechanism, it's only a four thousandth of a second, so that might be a problem. I don't have an ND filter out here. But anyways, this got the autofocus system out the Sony a7R5 plus the AI stuff. He got on a helmet with a visor and it's supposed to be able to, just like the a7R5, do the human pose estimation, figure out where the eyes are. So let me try to get this picture real quick. It's about to take off. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I was hoping you was looking towards me, but you was looking away. I think we got one though. Oh shit. There we go. It's another one coming. Hold on, there we go. Oh yeah. That's good. Anyways though, a few things. So first of all, it can shoot obviously raw JPEGs. It could do lossless raw, but not uncompressed. You could do JPEGs, you could do heat photos in 420 and 422, and you could do HLG still image. Up to 11 frames per second, mechanical and electronic with full autofocus and full auto exposure. And because of the AI chip, the co-processor here, Sony says that this thing is 20% better when it comes to calculating auto exposure based off the skin and all that stuff. The buffer is actually crazy. You could do a thousand JPEGs or 59 compressed raw. Did you actually look at it? Not. Nah, you can look through the eyepiece too. I know your FX30 ain't got no eyepiece. 
You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm just, I'm just telling you what it is. It ain't no eyepiece on there. And the ISO range is from 50 in photos to 102,400 in video. It's only 100 to 51,200. I'm probably mixing those numbers up and all types of stuff. But anyways, you can also do focus bracketing up to 299 frames. So I'm gonna tell you what's actually my favorite thing about this update, right? Is being able to touch the screen wherever you want to. It had a camera focus there and take the picture there. Other manufacturers have had this for a while i'm happy to see sony finally putting it in there all right abe is over there being security because it's late and it get real crazy over here but anyways what is the 6700 like for video i brought the fx30 because honestly they're pretty much the freaking same with the exception that the fx30 can output raw over hdmi so both of them have a 6k over sample image down to 4k so it's mad sharp they both got 14 stops of freaking dynamic range so it's plenty of latitude they both do 10 bit they both do 420 they both do 422 all intra compressed options 4k 24 4k 30 4k 60 4k 120 with a crop the 6700 can do 1080p 240 frames per second and you don't lose auto focus or tracking or anything like that no matter which mode you pick in with the 6700 you get all of that ai stuff so you get human pose estimation and subject tracking for planes trains automobiles all that stuff Ooh, i'm getting hot you can upload your luts to both cameras this has 4k 30 live streaming built into it it also has the new time lapse feature from the zve1 and the 6700 so what is it like for video it's pretty much the exact same as the fx30 which is not a bad thing because the fx30 is a cinema quality little camera when it comes to video tons of dynamic range it's a great sharp freaking image and honestly you can't go wrong with either when it comes to video and i just think it's crazy that we get this level of performance for this price is something this small oh yeah one more thing that i forgot to mention clear image zoom is just like the zve1 where it's uncompromised so you can turn on clear image zoom slap on active stabilization on top of it and you don't lose subject tracking even for planes trains and automobiles so for video the 6700 is honestly super clutch anyways while we're on the subject of video let's talk about rolling shutter performance sony says this camera should have fantastic rolling shutter performance it's a much faster processor it's got the ai chip in here so let's test it out So I just watched back all of the clips and the rolling shutter performance is actually really good. If this was my Sony a7 IV, it would literally look like spaghetti noodles while I was waving that back and forth. So just like the FX30, the rolling shutter performance out of this sensor and the 6700, really, really good. All right, let's talk overheating real quick. So right now it's about 80 degrees outside. I got the camera sitting on a black table. Now to be fair, we are in the shade, but it's still pretty warm out here. I do have the camera set to auto temp high and I'm recording in 4K 24 at the maximum bit rate. If you can't tell or if you can't see, we're at an hour and 22 minutes with no overheat warning in sight, which is pretty epic right now. Will it be different if you use 4K60, 4K120? Obviously, this will shorten. If you're in direct sunlight, obviously, this will shorten the time. But 80 degree weather over an hour of 4K recording straight is pretty good. I just got done filming the video. It didn't overheat at all. I'm using it as a top-down camera right now. I think the video was like 38 minutes. No overheat warnings, anything like that. And it is mad hot in this basement. But one thing I really like about this A6700 is Sony's new menu system. Now, this is similar to the ZV-E1, but all of your controls are now on the touchscreen. And I can't tell you how useful that is sitting below in a chair. Because typically, if you want to change something on the camera and you're sitting down below it in the seat, you got to reach up and hold that you're pressing the right button and all that stuff and now you just reach up and touch the screen so i wanted to start recording bam touch the screen and it starts recording so you can now touch the screen and adjust white balance and all that good stuff and iso right from the screen and you know there's more options you could do but shout out to sony for giving us these touch friendly menus on the screen i just wish i could get that on this camera right here let's do a little vlog section you see this stain on my shirt hey anyways i'm on the 6700 with the 15 millimeter f1.4 g 
I'm out here with the kids running back and forth down the street. But this is standard stabilization. So remember, this did not get the dynamic stabilization from the ZV-E1, but it is supposed to be improved because of the AI processor in here. So I'm not trying to hold the steady. This is standard arm's length. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to active so you can see what the crop is and how good is it. All right, I'm standing in the same spot, same arm length, same lens, same camera, same everything. This is what active looks like. So let me do some walking. I'm not trying to hold it steady. What you talking about? What you say? Say hi. Say hi, uh, Sharma. Hi, Sharma. Uh, <laughs> um, remember, we getting all the crops and stuff. So this is actually about probably 21 millimeter equivalent, but this is active stabilization and I'm not trying to hold it steady. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I'm sure one of these kids about to run into me. So see y'all later. One of my favorite features that they brought over from the ZVE1 to the A6700 is auto framing. So I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on how this works. So if it's just me, it'll focus on just me, right? It'll go with the shallowest aperture and focus on me. Also, it'll follow me back and forth throughout the frame as if there's a camera person moving the camera back and forth. But I'm about to throw a curveball at it. Hey Deuce, come here, don't trip on the tripod, come here. Now, now that there's more, one, more than one person in the frame, scoot back a little bit. What should happen is the camera should stop the lens down to get more people in focus. And also, it'll keep going with a wider and wider field of view and a deeper aperture, depending on how many people come into the frame. And it'll still keep us all in the frame, so it'll move us around accordingly. Once he's out the frame, it should focus back on me at f2.8. So, this is actually mad useful for solo content creators because it gives you some camera movement on an otherwise boring shot. But what about dual ISO? Let's talk about that one, let's go. Does the 6700 have dual base ISO? I'm sorry about the junk everywhere. Short answer, yes, it's the FX30 sensor. So an S-Log3 is exactly the same. Base ISO is 800, second base is 2500. There is some differences because FX30 does have center EI. The 6700 does not. The 6700 only has S-Log3 with flexible ISO. The second difference is because the FX30 can output raw, you can actually see how the dual base ISO affects the noise performance and all that stuff because overall, there's no noise reduction being applied. Because the 6700 does not have that capability, there's also noise reduction at play. With that being said, I'm gonna show you these three clips I have on the timeline. Now pay attention to the RGB overlay on the left-hand side and on the right side, pay attention to the noise pattern. So the first clip is at ISO 800, this is the base ISO, right? The second clip is ISO 2000. Now you can see the difference right now by paying attention to both of those things I just pointed out 800 2000 800 2000 now let's go from 2000 to the second base ISO which is 2500 at S-Log3 so 2000 2500 2000 2500 2000 2500 now you definitely see some color shift in there and you can definitely see the noise reduction kicking in so yes it does have dual base iso and to my knowledge the charts and all the picture profiles are exactly the same as fx30 you'll have to check gerald undone's video for confirmation because i didn't test all that all right you know what the last thing i forgot to mention to was uh microphones they did not put the vlog mics from the zve1 into the 6700 but they did move the microphones to the front and obviously you can go in the menu, customize your wind noise reduction and all that good stuff. Let me bring this all around full circle. I believe that the 6700 is a worthy successor to the 6600. Essentially what they did is they took all the stuff from the A7R5 and the ZV-1 put in the 6000 series body, took the FX30 sensor, gave it all the sauce from video and added in all this other stuff. Like they literally just piled on, piled on stuff and the result is a highly polished APS-C camera for not a lot of money, under 1500 bucks. I think this camera is gonna be a smash hit for Sony. It's not perfect, they could have definitely changed some things, but overall, I don't think it's many other cameras in the price range that will be able to run with the 6700. It is really, really a complete camera in all these different ways. So I really enjoyed my time with the 6700. Unfortunately, I have to send it back to Sony or they will have my head. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave your comments below on what you think about the 6700. And until next time, I'm out of here. Tight shirt, Terry Warfield. Piece of chicken grease, I'm out of here. Peace.